Hey everyone, uh, Pastor Chris here, fresh back from my month-long journey across England, parts of the U.S., football, baseball, football of course being football in the rest of the world, not soccer as we call it. Here, uh, so glad to be back, it, just, oh, it was a great uh, feeling to be back this last Sunday and, and to be back ready to engage fully here at Bethel. This is the fall season, it's October. A lot of big things happening this month, including your pastor's birthday. Uh, we have the the, um, the fall festival coming up here at Bethel. We have things like the state fair, football seasons in full gear. That is a American football. And, of course, here at Bethel we have, that means we're in our stewardship season. Um, so here in the next uh, couple of Sundays, we're going to be looking at this idea of, of stewardship. You're going to have a chance to kind of pledge uh, on uh, the, this next Sunday, um, your, your giving, your anticipated giving, but also your anticipated um, service to Bethel. So let's start with this idea of that a steward's a manager, right? Of, and, and the steward's been giving something to manage. So what, with that in mind, and, and we don't ultimately give to Beth, Bethel or any other organization, we ultimately give to God. So what is it that we at Bethel here have been asked to manage? And, then, and then, so that's why we start with the question of why Bethel? And we've done a really good job at Bethel of developing a strategic plan in the last couple of years and, 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 and looking to move forward in mission and ministry. But one of the things we realized when, when some of the leadership at Bethel went through uh, some, some leadership training over the last several months is that we, 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 we kind of skipped the step of asking the why. Not just why we exist. Because uh, all churches could have a similar, if not identical, why. But why would people want to join us and what makes us unique and different from other churches and service organizations? And then for you to ask as an individual, why Bethel for you? Why Bethel for you and your family? And then we ask that, we one of the concepts, and if you have the download of, of this kind of presentation, which was shared also with, with some of the leaders at Bethel a couple months ago, it's kind of the intersection of, they call it the hedgehog, right? It's the intersection of three things. What are we passionate about? What can we be the best at? And what drives us economically? So that's the why. Why Bethel? So we're going to be spending a good chunk of the next year unpacking that question. Why Bethel? And then from the why, we go into the who. And there's a concept there called the bus, right? And the bus is uh, getting the right people in the right seat. Uh, getting people in the right roles, um, being able to pivot when people leave and, and, when, and, and when a position becomes available or when a seat becomes available and recognizing maybe we have a whole lot of people in this seat over here and no one over there. So it's, it's asking that and it's realigning um, our staff and our key leaders and, and everyone ultimately into being in the right seat, the right place where God has designed them to be so they can most utilize their gifts. And then once you establish the, the why and then and the who, then you can go into the what. And that's the what do we do? What do we do as a ministry? How do we organize ourselves as a ministry? How do we engage our community? And, and so with that what, of course, we have things like strategic plans. We have things like ministry plans. We have things like a mission ministry wall as you walk into our facility, that, that, that explain the what we're doing, things like we worship, we have Bible studies, and things like that. And the, But now we're going to, as we really drill that down even deeper, the what looks more like this, this church engagement model. And that's been a key part of the training we've done has been around the idea of the church engagement model. That means that, that the church does five things. Any church, especially a healthy church, is going to do five things. You attract people. You, you, you draw people in, ultimately realize that the Holy Spirit's doing that, but you attract people to, to Bethel, right? Maybe it's the ELC initially, maybe it's an event, maybe it's a Monday night at prayer group at the Elks Lodge, whatever, but you attract people. And then once you've attracted them, then, because the attraction is the promotion, is you get them, right? And you, and you start asking questions like, why would people come? Why are people coming? Why would they come back? How do we compel them to come back? Then it's keep, right? How do people stay and how do we get them plugged in and involved? And then we get into some kind of more of the leadership stuff is how are people growing? 
How are people becoming disciples and leaders and making progress in their faith, making progress um, in their discipleship? And then finally, who are our multipliers? Who are the people that are giving sacrificially, um, that are training other leaders, that are, that are multiplying themselves? How do we align our resources to do the church engagement model? How do we make sure that we are attracting people, that we are getting them? But not only are we getting them, we're keeping them and we're growing them and we're multiplying them. How do we define success? What is an epic win? What are our desired outcomes? And then finally, how do we measure if an event, a program is success? How do we track? How do we follow up? Those are all the things that we are starting to implement Things like how do you gather data to know, right, the what. To know what is the people in our community are needing. What are the felt needs, those kinds of things. In order to make all this happen, then we go back to the who and we talk about six ministry teams. So we're going to be organizing ourselves um, to, to, in order to, to accomplish the what. We're going to be aligning our who with the, the six ministry teams. And as you do your stewardship, not only can you pledge your anticipated giving for next year, you can also say, hey, these are the ministry, this is the ministry team I would be interested in not only being a part of, because if you're doing any kind of volunteer work at Bethel at all, you're in plugged into one of these teams, whether you even realize it or not, but maybe you'd want to be a part of the leadership structure of one of these teams. So, for example, then, what does that look like? Well, we have six teams, and each team has a designated staff liaison. We have the stewardship team, and that's myself. Uh, we have the facilities team, and that's Natalie, so it's everything to do with the building, and also um, not only our facilities, but also our, our operations and our resources, and, and, and those physical resources. And then we have, um, and those two are going to work closely with the, our council, and then we have uh, four that are going to work with our spiritual leadership team. That's the engagement team, which is a brand new team, and, and it's going to look at everything we do from attract, get, and keep. How do we promote ourselves, how do we get people in the door. We have a family life ministry team, which is going to focus on our youth, our children, and um, the families, and that's going to be led by Jamie Dennison. Uh, the engagement team is going to be led, uh, the staff liaison for that is going to be Jackie, Jackie um, Meyer, and then um, our discipleship team, which is going to be looking more closely at the grow and the multiply, and that's going to be myself again leading that, and how do we multiply ourselves, how do we create new ministries, small groups, things like that. And then finally, our missions team, which is going to be everything to do with our Hispanic and Kenya Rwanda outreach, but also um, how do we uh, continue to grow our, our, our outreach to places like White Rock Center of Hope and um, Highland Meadows, places like that. Um, and then, we're, so we're going to be having a common onboarding and training processes for these groups. So ask that question, wrestle with how might a, a leadership pipeline and a discipleship process might make it easier for everyone who serves at Bethel. The ultimate end goal of all of this then, which it ties it back to the strategic plan, is to move people from consumers to contributors. And that, so how do we best move people connected to Bethel from merely consumers, people who just come, but to people who give and give of their time and give of their money and give of their resources? And again, all of this is in line with our strategic plan this gives us the needed structure and terminology to fully implement the things that we've already agreed to do, and all the things we've already said are our priorities. It's going to help us rally our resources and able to do that better. So as you prayerfully consider over the next few days, your giving of your time, your talent, your treasure, your resources, um, we wanted you just to be wrestling with the question of why Bethel? Thank you.